this situation and very unpleased when they just imagined how this situation would probably would uh, would um, alter when the British power is like uh, put out from um, American. So they were uh, a little bit pro-British from uh, the first moment on and uh, when they realized the whole of the situation they were um, very much inclined to to attack the colonists from uh, from behind and they did they did and of course this uh, diversion was was not so very efficient but the american colonists uh, the, the 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 patriots who revolted against the, because we must always remember about the loyalists especially in the south in the south carolina in the north carolina in georgia and so on there were many loyalists who even had their own songs like the congress when the song in which they were mocking the patriots but okay but but uh, especially numerous in the north uh, the, the the patriots were very much enraged with this uh, indian diversion and when the say the same thing repeated in the 18 uh, 12 1814 conflict with the Britain against the, the, the again the, the, the another conflict with Britain uh, it explains to some degree why the Indians the Native Americans were so uh, were treated with such contempt uh, by the Americans in the early 19th century and uh, why they were so brutally deprived of the land and so on and so on the, the, this pro-Britishness in the previous conflicts against the British crown uh, to some degree explains it. The same, uh, the, the, a little bit similar thing was with the black Americans. The, it was uh, the, the, the British um, 18th century conservative uh, thinker and um, political analysts we would say today, uh, Samuel Johnson. Uh, said that it's very uh, strange that the, um, the the loudest cry about liberty comes from the mouth of slave owners. It was a very harsh and very just critique. And uh, the Americans they they knew that some of um, the part of the um, of the base of um, American econ colonial economy was slavery. So they didn't mention slavery uh, explicitly in the in American first constitution and in the Declaration of Independence also they didn't mention it because they wanted to settle this thing later when the independent America is already created. So it's it but it's not all which is interesting with the black uh, folks in, in America back then. The also interesting thing is that the, uh, the, 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 Americans, the American colonists, the first patriots, uh, who revolted uh, first and foremost in the north when the abolitionist uh, viewpoint was predominant, they were Mm, uh, like 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 John Adams, for instance, they wanted to free the slaves um, because they didn't care because the, the the economy in this region was not based on slavery. There were hardly any slaves or hardly any blacks in this region, so they wanted the blacks, these un, un numerous blacks in the north, or maybe some refugees from so fugitives, not refugees, fugitives from the slavery from the south to join the Continental uh, Patriot Army against the British and they were enlist enlisting them in the ranks and they would continue to do so if not the General Washington was uh, elected to lead the Continental Army when so um, when um, this is very interesting thing about Washington because Washington is usually perceived as some sort of a very straightforward, uh, humble, uh, good uncle George uh, type of, of character. 
but uh, it wa it wasn't so not not entirely george washington was a very very good political player when the first continental congress started and they were discussing who could be the leader of the the Continental Army, George Washington didn't say a word 